Good morning, team. We're in for our Panthers and Broncos fantasy update. I will at the end as well, guys, for those interest, interested in the Supercoach side of things, do a quick run over of those scores as well. So I'm covering all bases. And if you want more thoughts on the actual game, I'm giving my takes each and every day, obviously before the round starts. And then, you yeah, know, I've just got my thoughts out for this game. I'll have my thoughts out for the two games tomorrow, just around the headlines of each of those and uh, what to look out for on NRL standpoint and really focus in on the fantasy and the super coach side of things in these wrap up videos. So yeah, awesome. Thank you so much guys for being in this one for the reviews yesterday. I think I picked up close to a hundred reviews from you guys on, on Spotify, which was uh, amazing. So thanks so much for that. Uh, you're all legends and, and hopefully that does help the channel and the uh, podcast grow. You're all absolutely amazing. Let's get into it guys. So Brian Toll. He was the beneficiary of yeah the, the the Broncos changing things in the second half. So the way they defended, the way they decided to come out and change things, moving to Tony Staggs to that left hand side defense on Tango was the was the correct move I would say, just given the fact that they were absolutely torching him down that side, and you know Isaac's got so much confidence right now. So to oh, I managed to get a couple of tries in you know. From your back end, sorry, in the start of the second half, and then get one a little bit after that as well, just to really, you know, put the nail in the coffin on this game, right? Because, yeah, very early on, it, it got away from the Broncos. Sadly, we we had the controversy. We've spoken about all that in the previous video, but um, yeah, just was never going to be good for the Broncos in this one, fantasy wise as well. It's it's something to note. Other than really Pat Carrigan, it wasn't great for. Yeah, the Broncos. Cobo held his own there with 46 and a try saver with a you know a nice line break with some good run meters on that. But outside of that, it was the it was the Panthers show and and that was kicked off with Toto with his 76. So you see there, 48 is the average after three games. Means he went low ish in the first two. So not someone that is clearly a target, but there will be a couple of these outside backs each and every week that dominate. And unfortunately, it's not my outside back. The two weeks that I brought him, very very funny. Uh, Cleary, guys, 75. He did get an eight-minute early mark, which was great. He got five goals, missed one, three try assists, picked up that line break as well. So when he's running the footy, it's uh, it's a sight to see. When he, he he gets close to the line, he's showing it, give and go, running the line, running through the line himself. It's uh, yeah, it's a sight to behold and uh, very very dangerous. You look at this score and you go, oh, well, that's a little bit frustrating. He was absolutely dominating with 60 at half time. Just things didn't. You know, pan out in the second half, foot was off the gas and they kind of let things go. Meters gain, probably a tiny bit down on his normal. Tackles a little bit down and then kick meters down as well. So he probably gets about five or so extra points at least on the kick meters side. So a bit of give and take. Averaging 61.3 over the first three games. Not ideal given he's priced well over, you know, 10 points over that. But you'll take the 75 and we haven't got a um, an update in, <laughs> in updates or down dates since last year for, for Cleary. Each game he's gone down in, in the post-game update. So yeah, tough times for him. Great times if you decide to pick Carrigan. So this is about what we expected. And, and just it just shows again the impressive nature of some of these players that they can just, regardless of anything that's happening around them, they can absolutely get through their work and not have a problem with that. Not missing any tackles for Carrigan. A couple of offloads, got his 167 meters. An impressive footballer at that. Expect him to go pretty close to 80 minutes on a regular basis. Obviously losing Walsh. Guaranteed, really, that he was going to play the 80 in this one. So there will be other games. He'll get 70. He might get 68. He could get a 75 or an 80 in other games as well. So depending on if they're winning, like if they're winning early, you know, if they're in the same situation the Panthers are in, he could get a rest early, you know, like like what Isaiah Yo did and what Cleary did in this one. So... Just be aware of that with Carrigan, but a great purchase last week and probably is a good purchase next week as well. Sorry, this week and next week as well. Isaac, 66 for him. So I picked the wrong center, sadly. Um, I suppose it happens sometimes, doesn't it? Went for the dual position guy with the lower break even than the uh, guy that was about to pop. And they've just gone right, giving him early ball. Not once in the last two games, apart from the try that uh, that, that May was able to set up to Toa, has that left-hand side being in a position that the right-hand side's been in every like third play at the moment. So yeah, the swings and roundabouts, it happens, but yeah, Isaac just an absolute gun. Top tier, got one easy one, one tough one where he had to get through a couple of defenders as well. So yeah, he's awesome. 
He'll be a clear keeper for the entirety of the year. He was last year. He will be this year as well. At times last year, he got, you know, he was averaging sort of 60 odd. And it's happening again now with 61. Isaiah Yo, 58. For those that captained him, there were a chunk of you guys. 72 minutes. So he would have got into the 60s with that. No negatives at all in this game. Very impressive character. Very important cog in this wheel of the Panthers. And he will continue to do this. Obviously, you would have hoped for a little bit more than 58. And again, if things were closer, he would have had to make more tackles, maybe a couple more tackle breaks in there, and he'll get into the 60s, closer to the 70 mark. So I expect next week that'll be the case. And uh, yeah, an awesome, awesome buy this week, obviously. Could have been better, but still great, especially when, you know, my, my, my May boy got 28. So that's that. Who else was a great buy this week? Liam Henry. So if we do happen to have Fisher Harris out for a little while, then, then Henry... And all these forwards are going to get that 40 minutes is pretty much what you saw across the board. Lindsay Smith was 47. You had Henry at 43, Eisenhuth at 44. So they're all kind of just mixing that load. Liotta, not really ever a massive minute forward either. So yeah, Liam Henry did his job, man. He's an impressive figure, that's for sure. The, the PPM that he can provide is Terrell May style. Just isn't getting the the, the same minutes as Terrell. But again, if, he's, he's a, if Henry's a 40 a week guy, for the next bit, he's got some cash to make. And we didn't really speak about him too much because we didn't know what type of minutes that he would get. We thought, you know, maybe a couple of the other guys like Lindsay Smith might get a few more, but he actually got a few less. So yeah, Henry, with those minutes there, he missed a few tackles last week, not at all this week and uh, did a great job. So he just kind of was just accumulating very, very quickly. So what well on Tim, he becomes an option next week for sure, but a buy in a couple of weeks. How many Panthers do you have? All the questions you need to ask yourself there. But well done if you bought this week. He is owned by 2.7, so low enough. Cobo, 46 for him. So yeah, did really well in a tough game for his side, to be honest with you there. So 46 for him. Make some money on the back of that lower break, even after the 70-odd. And look, does he play fullback next week? Potentially. I think Tristan Saylor probably comes in and Cobo keeps the center spot. So him having to move around to still get 46, you're very happy at that dual position price there. And they eventually, after these first bunch of rounds have been tough, start to play some easier opponents. And I do believe that Cobo becomes a, a very nice option in that dual position range. Again, I said that about Taylor May. May just isn't, unfortunately, doesn't have to be their exact strike weapon every week. They have so many. Where Broncos and their outside backs, he is the guy that they will target and use. And obviously in this one as well, with Walsh going down, it was even more important that Cobo was their man. So... That's probably the only difference, I'd say, between him and Talon. Both super strike. Cobo probably just gets a little bit more ball. Edwards with 45, guys. He was good again. 309 meters. Just very impressive. And you look at that 309 meters and you're like, wow, he just runs the ball lots. And you could say, oh, well, is he hogging the ball? Every time he gets the ball, obviously coming off you know, kicks, he's going to make 20 or so meters. So that's where a lot of the run meters come from. But then he'll get it on second or third play. And he always has a head of steam up and the defense is always retreating at this point. And he, he picks up 18, 20 meters very comfortably with a few PCMs as well. So the work that he puts in for this side is 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 unmatched and it's it's so important. Like it, it does so many good things for them. We 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 spoke we've spoken about you know To'o and his ability to to get those big meters for this side, but Edwards is one of those guys that needs to be spoken about and uh yeah, he's a standout each and every week for this side. Jensen got the 48 minutes in this one. So that was expected. I think close to the 50. Obviously, with an injury to Walsh, things change a little bit. You know, him, he got some decent minutes. Willison got some some good minutes. Same with Hetherington, same with Baker. And yeah, I suppose that's probably all that we needed to know. Jensen was a bit more expensive, so he probably wasn't the guy to, to purchase. And then you had Fletcher Baker as well, who we're just unsure if he, how, how he's still going because he hasn't scored too well to begin the year. But obviously, the minutes that he was provided in this gives him an opportunity to, to score well. Madden, on the other hand, very impressive with the situation that he was provided with 43. Likely there for the next couple of weeks, but a bit too expensive for a guy that you might want to make, you know, to buy and make money. He had to he has to be scoring in the 50s, and, and that's unlikely to happen at this point. Mitch Kenny got a lovely try in there, but this these are the games that we're worried about. So if he didn't get that try in this one, he is well down. Let's give him 15 points for that play with the run 
tackle break and yeah, line break and try. 15 points. He's down to a 28 because there are games here when, when they are dominant, he does seem to obviously make less but miss a lot more as well. And that's sort of every second or third game with Kenny. He'll have his big 50 game, but then he'll come out and have a 28, right? So that's what you're looking at with Kenny. Well done. If you did buy him this week, you'll take the 43. He makes some money. But longer term, that's the volatility that you should expect from Kenny. Lindsay Smith spoke about 42 in 47 minutes, not a buy. Mariner, if you're owning him, take the 41. He will start to make a decent amount of money now. 37 last week, 41. This week, himself and Arthurs have taken a step up and are really elevating the edges of this side and will be very important long-term for their you know, chances of, of winning this, this competition. That's for sure. So yeah, he, he's growing before our eyes. Let's say that with Dean. Liam Martin, 40 in this one. So just a, a bit of a yeah lower game. It, it, you, know, you didn't expect there to be a hell of a lot of tackles for these Panthers you know, edges, especially even the middle forwards for the most part. Like you saw Kenny there with lower, lower tackles. You have slightly lower tackles for that of um, Isaiah Yo with 32 compared to his 40s. Carrigan had to do plenty of work in that middle there. And um, yeah, just don't look at the, the tackle counts too much for this game. And that's where like Martin's going to be down. We'll speak about Sorensen in a sec, but uh, Luai with 40, not a lot going on for him. He did kick for 234 meters as well. So a bit, a, a decent jump there, especially when Cleary only went for 291. So they went both, you know, left and right with their kicking, which is a little bit frustrating for Cleary, but you know, Luai, we usually expect him to be about the 150 to 200, but that's with Cleary kicking for a lot more. So they didn't have to as much in this game. Eisenhuth, 44 minutes. Hetherington, 45. So, you know, nice one for him. He, he's at an awkward price as well to expect him to, to get these type of minutes on a weekly basis. I do think all of these guys will drop a bit. Same for that for Willison, who came out and, and he had a good game, guys. A couple of missed tackles for him. Did pick up a line break with a, with a tackle break there and an offload. 93 meters gained for him. So if he did hold on in the end, happy days. He got dual position cover in the mid and the edge. Should you take that 35? Most likely, I think that, you know, it's going to be hard for a lot of, you know, the Salmons and these type of guys to exceed that. So I do think playing that 35, taking it, we see in this game that, you know, it's not devoid of risk, is it? With like Walshie going down early, you know, people can get sent off, people can get sin bin, people can get HIAs. It, a lot of things happen and I think you need to take some safety with the 35 in that one. So Baker ended up moving to the edge for a good portion of this game and played 71 minutes. So 34 points for him it just shows that his ppm is not incredible like four four missed tackles and error it was never going to be great in this game on an edge defending against this team in the panthers so for him to go out and do that job yeah kudos to him for playing the big minutes but uh yeah 34 he only makes a little bit of cash if he if he averages 34 from here so it's probably not worth it one we're a little bit worried about obviously you know walter's 31 it's probably what you're going to get from him on a regular basis so if you, as you've seen but pick her up with 30. And I'm not sure, did anyone hear anything about his HIA getting hit again in that last three minutes? He got taken off for the HIA. It didn't actually look good at all. So let me know your thoughts on that, guys. And if you've, if you've heard anything further on Pico, I'll, I'll check with NRL Physio um, about about that soon. But yeah, overall, not good. Wade Egan is out tonight. There you go. Um but it didn't look good again. Like he actually looked like he may have potentially failed that. And, and we know that he's had a few concussions in recent history, obviously one in round one. And yeah, not ideal if he could, if that happened again, but thank goodness he got that line break try assist down that, uh, down that left-hand touch line. 17 tackles for six misses. He obviously played a decent amount at center, but also in the back row. And he does seem to be a guy that will miss some tackles and it's very hurtful for our fantasy teams. But at, at 359, We'll cop the 30, but we, we hope for more and we do hope for a try at some point, but a peak at the moment, hopefully next week is the week or the next couple of weeks when it gets a little bit easier for him eventually that he can uh, get some attack. So hopefully he's fine to go. We don't need another player out next week. Well, I know I don't given I've got three storm players and we're unsure what's going to happen with Taylor May at this point, but uh, yeah, peak 30. Arthur's 30, got a nice try off, you know, Pukura there at the end which is very helpful for his score given you know, he, he ran for sort of close to 50, 50 meters, 40 meters or something like that. And you know, a few tackle breaks in there and the try really saved his score. He was going to be very low. So we just, just weekly basis scoring tries. Good on him. Uh, Taylor, the head clash, you know, strapped himself up. He was bleeding. 
how good's the uh the chin strap over the top it's pretty funny but uh yeah so we spoke about that tackle and everything in the in the previous video got the try assist this one run meters really low so two penalties and inside 10 a missed tackle early wasn't great obviously marred by a little bit of controversy at the start that he just didn't look in the game as much after that thankfully he defended okay thankfully got the try assist but 70 70 run meters is not not good enough for what we need like if he's 150 he's getting a couple of tackle breaks in there potentially an offload as well and that's close to a 40 which is what we at least want at a minimum with then upside on top of that so if he is out for a couple of weeks i'm rage trading given he'll be out in round six as well and uh it's enough money like he's not going to lose too much at 28 like it'll lose 10 or something like that now but it's not good enough unfortunately just end up with the wrong center and the way that you know, panthers played it, it, it hasn't suited him sadly at this uh you know this this second couple of games so they use him so much in the first one they just haven't used him at all in the game since so it happens sometimes and it's, it's a lesson learned for yeah you know, i was back in the talent in and um they just haven't gone to him i suppose in these couple of games it does show that with a lot of players you should watch more than one week or two weeks in this case world club challenge i was um yeah loved watching him play there he killed it and then round one so two games there i thought that was enough of a sample size to to go for with the talent that he possesses with the dual position there's plenty of um good reasons to go for it a 28 look it's not the worst as i said there's a lot of people watching this video that have reese walsh so i will not complain about that i wish for more like we always do but uh it's not going to kill my week it's not going to kill my season having a guy average 31 at a you know a 40 odd price point not going to kill my season at all so that's that with Talon. we'll see what happens with his read you know, with hearing and what's going to happen with him if it's a couple of weeks i'm selling because that's three weeks and that's enough in my opinion but we'll work it out if he's playing next week awesome should be able to get a, a better score surely <laughs> uh yeah so if you follow me on that one sorry that that's panned out the wrong way but there were a lot of circumstances where it would have worked out the right way a few circumstances like this where he has shown a little bit of ill discipline he yeah things have happened in the game where they've gone the other side so there's a few things around that for sure all right ricky again this is just the example of one flash in the flash in the pan score you got to look back at the types of scores that they had longer term with Taylor, at least, you know, he has a, a history of averaging in the 40s, right? So if he was to at least get that, he's holding money and, he, and he's, you know, it's decent scores. Whereas Ricky, we know that he's like a low 40s guy at best. And yeah, that 50 odd in the first game wasn't going to continue. I didn't expect it to be this low, but he also played a lot of center and he got rushed around. So not some, not a game that I'm judging him on at all. And uh, we'll go from there. Sorensen with 19 in this one in the 49 minutes. So the, he's someone that we need to watch because after their buy, he's a very, very interesting prospect. If he can get well into the 500s and then get back to some decent minutes, he obviously just hasn't returned really well. He doesn't look anywhere near the same post leg issue. And he only got the 49 minutes in this one replaced by Garner 431. Obviously he must be still dealing with a little bit, you know, for him just to play 49, it's very, very low. And obviously not playing super well. Three missed tackles in that out of 16 made. He's someone to watch out for. Dual position, plays round 13, I believe anyway. Um, really, really good setup after their round six buy. So let's see how he goes over the next few weeks and to make some decisions post that buy. And then Garner, he's going to continue to go down in these types of minutes. So if he ever happens to get a starting spot longer term, which it only is one injury away for Garner, He's someone to look out for as well. And then Walshie with his two. Let's all hope that he is back next week. If it's a one week out thing, I do think you hold. Anything outside of that, he's going to lose some money now. Thankfully, he had a bit of a lower break even because he killed it the first two games. But anything outside a couple of games and he is potentially a sell and we should see Tristan Saylor next week. But it does seem like from what I saw with NRL Physio that it isn't a, a cheekbone fracture or anything. And hopefully it's either play next week maybe a week off and just get it get it right in this one so yeah Ezra Mam as well 25 a little bit better than you know the last the first two weeks but still not great and it still definitely needs to be a sell okay let's finish it off with the super coach scores now thank you for all the fantasy crew if you're not playing super coach appreciate you guys watching you're all legends let's go to the super coach side now and Cleary 119 and, and he was I think 96 at half time or something so yeah, very, very low second half, similar to that in fantasy there. 119 
for those that did VC him, you want to make sure that you do have some like solid scorers on your bench in the sort of 25 to 30 range, most likely to be able to loop at 120, especially if you've got like a Nico Hines as your, well, you can't have Nico Hines as captain there if you have him as vice, but if you're going for like a Tommy, we've seen that he can get 50s. We see he can get 80 or 150. So you definitely want someone that can score okay, and then you can get that safety vice captain loop uh, for sure on that one. If you're not sure with that one, guys, you can move you can move your captaincy in Supercoach. It doesn't lock out like fantasy. So you can um, muck around with with where you want who you want to put that captaincy on. Obviously, on a non-player, you get the lowest from your reserves if you're not sure. Uh, yeah, everyone on their bench. Toto was great. Tonga was great. So two massive scores for Isaac. He's going to go up so much money now after double hundreds and he'll go up again the following week because his um, yeah, first week score wasn't too, wasn't too high. But these last two have been massive. If you did go Isaiah Yo in the N62 on that front, I got pretty lucky personally. This is in the head-to-head team, guys. I, I had to start, well, I decided to start Henry over Hughes, which was probably a no-brainer, but got lucky with the 52 in this one. Very happy with that given I have Flegler. So decided to play Henry, got the 52. Taylor May just got a try contribution for the, the Toto one. So yeah, not only four points compared to the you know 20 that you can get, which is unfortunate. Outside of that, not too much to talk about from a Panthers perspective there. Mitch Kenny, if you got him as hooker, obviously the try helped on that front. And then the, the Broncos side of things, you've got Piakura with 58. So I was very worried for him. And his prospects of even uh, well scoring well for me would be nice. But uh, yeah, the line break and the try assist really helps. So thankful to to Arthurs for bumping off the few players and, and going the distance to score. But as you can see here, it wasn't a game at all for the Broncos there with Carrigan getting the highest score of 64 for them. Cobo with 57, Mariner 55, and uh, where's Arthurs? Arthurs at 40. So that kind of saved your score a little bit. That, you know, that run and and try and then Walsh is sitting on one so very very frustrating for those players that that bought him in in that they're at uh, 813,000 owned by 15% of squads and was doing absolutely incredibly before that so you know 70 uh, an 80 or 73 and an 88 his first two games very, very sad on that front and then Corey Jensen if you um if you had him from the start and I was mentioning him it was potentially starting with him in in the head head squad and didn't he's got a little bit of luck in game one, a little bit of luck in game three. Not so much last week, but it's worked out pretty well for him. And if you do have Xavier Willison on your bench, you picked up a 45. So let's uh, let's get those price rises rolling very soon with him. I suppose that's all we need to say on the Supercoach side, guys. A little bit of a important game. If you did have like a Tungor to or Cleary, if you had any of that combination, two out of three would be great. And then, you know, Pikura with the 58 kind of saved his score. And uh, yeah, we're sitting in a, a solid spot. Obviously, May with the 31, not ideal. The rest of the score is great for this game. And then we look forward to tonight's game, the Warriors up against the Raiders with lots of relevant plays in this one. I'll be backing in Roger in Supercoach, Luke Metcalf, and then Taintor Picky. So hopefully it's a Warriors masterclass. And uh, for the Raiders, for my Supercoach team, I only have Smithies there. Um, it's obviously a different story in fantasy, that's for sure. But thanks for being in on this one. Fantasy, the super coach, and then if you want your NRL chat, head to the video just posted there, my grand final rematch thoughts. Thanks, guys. See you later.